Hi. I just want you to know this is the fourth attempt to record this video. I don't know if I have the energy to do this uh, again if it fails again, but I keep running into technical issues. So a bunch of you have asked me to do this video. Um, it's about how I dealt with my back pain and how I'm feeling now. What did I do to get uh, to get better? And here's what I did. First, I want to talk about the origins, right? Um, because for me, the origins I don't believe were physical. It's possible that I might have done something uh, to upset it. I mean, I did carry some uh, heavy piece of furniture up the stairs, and uh, I had some back pain after that, but I don't think that was the main cause. I believe the origins for me were mental, so that there were some mental triggers uh, that caused the pain. And it could be stress. I mean, you know, we just, we're not really good at dealing with stress, are we, as people? Most of us just don't know how to deal with the stress, and it just keeps accumulating in our bodies, um, in our minds, in our hearts, and it weighs on us, and then it manifests itself in the body psychosomatically. Uh, so it could be maybe um, some attitudes that I had towards stuff. It could be many things, you know, exhaustion from work, um, all, of those, all of those things coming together and causing this. Um, I'm still looking at that. But I wanted to tell you how I dealt with the physical side of things. So uh, when the pain started, I went to um, I went to chiropractors. I mean, I, I I do go to chiropractors from time to time um, to get adjustments because I I I work out, or at least I used to work out regularly, and I needed the adjustments. When the pain started, I I started going more frequently to chiropractors and osteopaths to see if more regular adjustments would help, um, but they didn't. They didn't help, and um, as the pain got worse, it got to the point where right after I got the adjustment, I felt better, and then I'd step out of their office, and on my way to the car, the pain would start again. Or I'd get in my car, start driving home, and there we go, the pain would be there again. So it was just not helpful. And I'm almost uh, sworn off chiropraxy for now because I believe that most chiropractors are absolutely clueless about what they're doing. They just know the movements of the adjustments. They know they got to hear the popping sounds of the bones as they supposedly align. But I think they're fucking clueless, most of them, uh, and talentless. So that's just me. Um, after months and months of torturous pain that they weren't able to do anything about, and after me paying them lots of money. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. Um, I went to get an MRI, and um, as expected, herniated discs, lumbar and sacral region, four or five of them, uh, to varying degrees. It's like when you go to the neurologist and they tell you, and he tells you, well, you got this progressively uh, neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative disease. We know the name for it. We know it's going to happen to you, but we can't do shit for you. So that's what the MRI told me. Told me what I, what I already knew. Um, and the doctors weren't able to do shit for me. And I'm sorry, but I'm just, you know, I'm pissed off about these things. Um, they were pushing surgery, but I'm sorry, I will not have rods screwed to my vertebra nor will I have my discs replaced by silicone, nor will I cut off the nerve endings to my vertebra so that I'm flying blind and I don't know when I'm causing pain to that area, because those are about three options that exist nowadays. So those are the absolute last resort for me. I'd rather slit my throat than go through that shit. Um, so, yeah. After the MRI, more visits to chiropractors and to doctors, um, some dumbass chiropractor had me stay in bed for 12 days guaranteed that the pain would go away didn't go away went back to him also like a dumbass 
um, uh, seeking uh, more help and he told me well I must have done something wrong when I was laying in bed go back lay in bed some more and uh, and it'll be better and let me do the adjustment again so you know right after I got out of his office the pain started again I, but I still went and stayed in bed for seven more days hoping some miracle would happen nothing happened so F him what a piece of shit he is He's famous in Romania, he charges lots of money for every consultation, but he's a piece of shit and he's inept. I'm not going to mention his name. Um, what did help for me was slightly was taking supplements like chondroitin, glucosamine and uh, hyaluronic acid and multivitamins. I was taking those. I was also taking uh, superfoods. Um, and I, um, I have a video that I made called the Wonder Smoothie. I'll put a link to it. Uh, just go look at it. It's got a bunch of superfoods in it. It's a concoction that's barely drinkable, um, but it's got a lot of superfoods in it that help the body recover after workout and uh, workout and such. Uh, you know, heavy effort. Um, I was getting, and I am still getting, constant deep tissue massages from a knowledgeable masseuse, uh, masseur, masseuse massage practitioner. I still get those massages. They do help uh, and I encourage you to get them uh, because um, these are vigorous massages that encourage circulation of both the blood and the lymph and all of the tissues that get massaged. This is not some kind of spa massage where you go and they go doo -doo 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 on your skin and they play some nice music and they, you know, they light an incense and, and, and crap like that and you fall asleep during the massage. No, this is the kind of massage where you where you beg off, where you you say, come on, that, that, that's enough, I'm in pain, stop it. And, and he says, no, 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 this is helping, let me go on. So um, that's the kind of massage I'm talking about. Uh, I was trying to do all kinds of stretching exercises, stretching routines to see if they would help, but the relief was only temporary. And so I'd be doing the stretching. Yeah, I was tight in certain muscles. Um, and this, while I was doing the stretching, the, the back pain would subside temporarily. But as soon as I get up and sat on my chair to do the work that I have to do, because there's nobody else to do it, um, the pain would start up again. So that didn't help. And the fucking morons, both the doctors and the chiropractors, advised me against doing yoga. And yoga would have helped, seriously, because I've started doing yoga now, and I found a certain routine particularly, and I'm sure there's tons of other routines, but this routine helped me, so I'm going to link to it in the video. Um, it's a hip opening routine, and it's amazing because I still get occasional back pain. It's not to the same level that it was before, not by far, but I do still get occasional back pain, and when I do this routine, it takes it away. So yes, yoga helps, but these morons would tell me, no, 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 it ruins the adjustments. Don't go, don't go exercising, don't go running, just stay in bed. Don't do anything to ruin the fucking adjustments. What idiots they are, I swear, God, it pisses me off because, because they don't do this just to me. They do it to plenty of other people, and they're putting them through unnecessary pain and expense and suffering because they're advising them wrong. So, oh. things got progressively worse for me, as you could expect. You know, when, when you go to see morons uh, who don't actually treat the problem, things get progressively worse. And so they did. And... Um, the pain became unbearable. I started abusing uh, various uh, OTC uh, pain relief medications like ibuprofen. I was up to like 1,800 milligrams a day. And you know that's liver damage right there. Um, I switched to other things, uh, other pain medications that I could still get and the doctors would prescribe. They didn't help either. And then I was up to codeine and morphine patches, uh, codeine tablets and morphine patches. And... Um, Thank goodness I found a doctor that would prescribe them. 
uh, don't worry, I didn't get addicted. I'm not that kind of person. Uh, these medications, after a while, my body rejects them. And so I had to stop taking them. Just like my body rejects alcohol or, uh, or tobacco uh, or, you know, these addictive medications, I do not get addicted. I'm not that kind of person. I just start feeling worse and worse as I use these things, and then I have to stop because I can't deal with the nausea and the vomiting and the other crap that goes on. And so I was up to codeine and morphine, and I was completely out of it. I couldn't do my work. I couldn't sit at my desk. I was just like walking around the house like a dumbass zombie. Uh, so that was not a livable situation. I stopped taking medication, and I was back to unbearable pain and torture. Um, so what I did is I crawled on the floor. Yeah, I crawled on the floor on all fours uh, for a while you know, for a good few weeks. And I would drink uh, Tzwika. Uh, Tzwika, if you don't know, is, is a kind of Romanian plum brandy. It's, um, it's different from other hard drinks because it doesn't give you weird hangovers. And it doesn't... When you get drunk on Tzwika, at least for me, I get, like, happy drunk. Uh, I wouldn't get, like, sick drunk like I'd get on... on, on uh, vodka or, or whiskey or, uh, or beer or other things that I drank in the past. And I didn't, and on Tzwika, you don't get these bad hangovers. So um, I just, you know, drank Tzwika uh, to help with the pain. It didn't really help with the pain. Uh, I was still in pain, but at least I didn't give a shit about it. But still, obviously, that was not a way to function. That was not a way to get through life. Um, that was not something sustainable, not something I could do long term. It wasn't even something I could do for a few weeks. I mean, after a week or so of the stuff, I had to stop because I, you know, it's, I can't be a drunkard. My body just does, will not work that way. My mind will not work that way. So I had to stop that too. And that's when I was at my lowest um, because nothing helped. Nothing helped and I refused to get surgery. And I still refuse to get surgery. And thank goodness I refused surgery because I got better without surgery. Um, so let me tell you how I got better. How I actually got better. The one thing that worked was that I found a traditional healer. His name is Costica Bonta. He lives in the city of Baia Mare in the province of Maramuras in Romania. If you want to fly to him, you're welcome. I'll post his contact info in the video. Um... I'll post his phone number as well. Don't bug the guy. He'll hang up on you. Be aware of the, um, the time difference. If you're from another country, don't call him in the middle of the night. Um, he's the kind of person that senses you over the phone, and if he doesn't like you, he'll be rude to you. He'll hang up on you. Hey, it's his privilege, you know? He gets to do what he does to the people that he wants to do it to. So if he doesn't want to help you, he won't help you. Um... So he's the guy that within two sessions, you know, two sessions that lasted less than five minutes each helped me. And what he does is sort of similar to chiropraxy, but it's not. It's similar to osteopathy, but it's not. It's this traditional thing where he stretches the muscles, where he uh, stretches the joints, and some of the things that he does pop the joints. So you hear these popping sounds in the joints. Um... But look, after two sessions, I was back on my feet, you know, from crawling on all, floor, on all fours on the floor, like, uh, I don't know, like what, but uh, that was not a human condition. Um, so then he also prescribed um, a bunch of traditional uh, courses of treatment, he prescribed this powder called the monk's potion or whatever the heck they called it. I forget the name for it, but it was... Uh, a mixture of some things that you can actually get at the pharmacy in Romania. Um, and you mix that with water. It doesn't mix with water. You just kind of mix it, you swill it around, and you drink it, and it's bitter as hell. Um, so he prescribed that for me. Then he prescribed enemas that I had to go through for three weeks, and I absolutely hated the enemas because who the hell wants explosive diarrhea? Seriously, three times a day. So I hated it, but I went through it. 
And then he also prescribed uh, rubbing down my body, my entire body, with a mixture of water and vinegar and salt. And I am completely disgusted by the smell of vinegar. I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't want to be near it. Um, and so I talked him out of the, the vinegar thing, and he said, okay, you can substitute rubbing alcohol instead of the vinegar and do that way. So I did that. And he also prescribed... Uh, two very simple exercises. One was laying on my back, bringing my knees to my chest, holding that um, while saying a prayer. Not big into, you know, saying these prescribed prayers, uh, but I did it because I wanted to get rid of my back pain. The other exercise was uh, holding the vacuum pose. And those of you who do yoga, you're familiar with the vacuum pose and, or, or you do bodybuilding. Well, you know, maybe the ones who did bodybuilding in the past, because the ones of you who do bodybuilding nowadays, you have no idea what the vacuum pose is. You all have gorilla guts, and you are horrible looking. I'm sorry, but you just look like shit. Uh, you need to start doing vacuum poses. You need to stop taking so much damn HTH and insulin and all the other shit that you take that swells your guts uh, to the point where you look ridiculous. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, uh, those two exercises. And he also had me say a prayer when, do, when, when, when doing the vacuum pose. I didn't like it, I did it. Um, so do like three sets of that, you know, those two exercises uh, a couple times a day. And that was the course of treatment that I followed. Um, now, I did more than two sessions with him. You know, I, I, I went back for like a full week's course of treatment with him. And then um, I went back for follow-up treatments every three, four months after that. So now I, I did two follow-up treatments with him where I went um, and stayed uh, there for two, three days. And I did two, three treatments, uh, two, three sessions with him. Um, each follow-up treatment that I did. I did like two, three sessions just to make sure that, you know, things stayed on course for me. And they are. They're on course. Um, I'm actually fully functional now. I have a little back pain. Uh, it does flare up from time to time, but when it does, I, I take care of it. And how I take care of it, I'll tell you. Um, it's the supplements. It's the deep tissue massage. It's a massage bed that I, uh, that I use, and I'm pointing in that direction because that's where it is. It's right next to my desk, and I jump on it once a day or twice a day, and I do like uh, 20, 25 minutes on it. It's a special massage bed uh, made in China um, with genuine jade stone, stones, jade rollers that roll up the entire length of the body, both the legs and the back all the way up to the head, and they raise the vertebra, as they roll through, right, they go like this through the body, and they roll through, and they slightly extend the space between the vertebra, vertebra to, uh, to help the discs, you know, relax, and of course they generate infrared heat, and uh, it, the jade stones reflect that infrared heat back onto the body, and they ampli am am amplify it. If you believe in the properties of jade stones, then you know what I'm talking about. And um, it's really helpful because it promotes uh, not only increased circulation to the discs, but all of that together helps them regenerate and heal a little better and hydrate. You know, as we get older, our discs dehydrate. And, and so when they get dehydrated, uh, they get smaller in height. And um, that's when we start running into problems like bone rubbing on bone. Or maybe they get so dehydrated that they start to fragment and we run into other issues then and so on and so forth. Um, if they're not properly hydrated, then when we put stress on the body, they tend to herniate and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, this, this bed promotes the healing of those discs. Um, so it really does help. At least I believe so and I've seen it work on my body. The other thing that I do is an inversion table. I use that and I hang on it for about five to ten minutes uh, every time I do it. Now with the inversion table there's a learning curve because you do get nausea as you hang upside down so you need to um, you need to um, 
get used to it. You only, you'll only be able to do it for like two, three minutes at a time. Uh, and after a while, you'll be able to do it for like five or ten minutes, and that's when you'll see the difference. Um, because it really allows the, uh, the discs um, to relax and the vertebra to relax. It elongates the back, and uh, um, at least I see a difference. Like I, I have pain flare-ups. I go do the inversion table. And after five, ten minutes on it, I get off it, and the pain's gone. So you can't say that it doesn't work. It certainly works. Um, what I also did to address the problem, uh, I'll talk about that a little later. Let me talk also about what I do now to address the problem, is ozone injections. And so I do both subcutaneous and deep tissue ozone injections where um, the, uh, the sports doctor will take, um, will take this injection, this syringe. Uh, they have the special machine that generates pure ozone. And, uh, takes the syringe and injects it subcutaneously just under the skin. That's for uh, inflammation, um, superficial inflammation. Or he takes this big needle, long as my finger, and he injects it deep down in my back, um, right next to the spinal cord, uh, spinal column, right next to the discs, to the problem areas, and he injects a lot of um, a lot of ozone there in the muscles, um, and, and and that tissue, and uh, the ozone helps with the healing of these uh, inflamed areas and with the healing of the discs, because I do believe that discs can heal. Um, traditional or allopathic doctors will tell you that no, no, no. You know, you, once you screw up your your, vert, your discs, um, you can't. They don't heal up. You're screwed up. You gotta you gotta go to surgery. You gotta get them replaced, or you gotta fuse your vertebra, or whatever. Blah blah blah. I don't believe that. So um, yeah, I don't believe it. I've seen it work on my body, so you can't tell me otherwise. Now. Um, What I also did was that I went to this doctor in Bucharest that does posturology studies. If you've never had a posturology exam you, and you, you have problems maybe or pain or you, you feel that you have imperfections in your, uh, or imbalances in your body or in the ways that your muscles develop as you go to the gym, you need to go get a posturology exam. And the posturology exam, sorry, my nose itches, um, it's not that... I'm lying to you because in some uh, in some studies say when you rub your nose, uh, you're lying to people. No, it's just that it's, it is. It itches. Is. Um, I did the posturology exam and it discovered imbalances in my in the way my body developed. I mean, not only did I have scoliosis and kyphosis when I was a child, it was mild. It wasn't accentuated it was just mild and I did a lot of swimming uh, which helped straighten out my back and also did weightlifting when I was in college which helped it even further because it strengthened the back muscles and allowed my back to become straighter so now when you look at the x-rays of my back you can barely notice anything uh, unless you know what you look for but anyway I did the posturology exam and he did discover problems in the way I was moving and uh, the way these things are done is that it's both video and it's this electronic carpet. It's a carpet with sensors underneath that collects, they collect uh, thousands of points of data about the way you step down and the way you, um, the way you distribute the weight on your feet. And he prescribed these inserts that I wore in my shoes for about three months and uh, now I gotta go back for a follow-up exam um, to see if I need to change the inserts because the inserts are corrective they don't stay the same forever so you need to go back for follow-ups to see if they need to change the inserts slightly you know to help you get even better um, and he also told me that I was imbalanced um, in the way that my body had developed um, through bodybuilding because 
I had stopped working on my legs so much. Uh, and so my upper body had gotten bigger than my legs. Now, I didn't have chicken legs, um, but I hated the way my quads felt when they were big and they were rubbing against each other. You know how when your quads get so big, they start rubbing? And it's just, it's disgusting. I don't like it. So I, I stopped working out my, my legs with uh, a lot of weight. And of course, they decreased in size. But I continued working on my upper body with a lot of weight. And, you know, that led to imbalances. And he said, look, you're imbalanced. You need to stop working out your upper body with so much weight so that you can um, rebalance your body. Um, so that was a useful piece of advice for me. Um, now, uh, I think that's a two-way street. I think that I could also work on my legs to get them bigger again and then balance my body that way. But he'll probably tell you otherwise. Um, there's, a, there's a set of measurements, of ideal measurements, as they're called, um, published by Steve Reeves. If you don't know who Steve Reeves is, uh, you need to look him up. He was the original... Um, amazing bodybuilder. He played Hercules in a bunch of movies in the uh, 50s and the 60s. Um, before Arnold, um, there was Hercules. Uh, there was Steve Reeves. And an uh, um, amazing guy. Never took steroids and yet still had amazing muscular development. And so he published a set of ideal measurements for the body. You know, what should your biceps be or forearms, neck, chest, uh, waist, legs, calves, so on and so forth, so that your body is properly balanced and you don't run into issues or you don't look weird. And so um, if you want me to, I'll do a video about those. I have to look them up. They're somewhere. I wrote them down. I'll find that piece of paper that I wrote them down on and do a video about it if you're interested. Or maybe you can find them on the net. Just Google Steve Reeves and ideal measurements and see if you can find something like that or the classic physique uh, measurements. Um, I've also begun doing yoga, and yoga helps a lot because it's not just something that stretches. They're not just muscle stretches. They, they help quiet the tension and relieve the tension in the body and in the mind. If you, if you get in the right mindset to do the yoga poses and the yoga routines, and um, I'm just a yoga novice. I'm not a specialist. I don't, I don't plan on being one. Um, I just, you know, I found some poses that helped me. I found a routine that helped me. And I'll post a link to the routine in the video as well so you can see it and uh, see if it helps you. And I still continue to take the supplements that I mentioned before. You know, glucosamine, chondroitin, hyaluronic acid, and multivitamins. And I still continue to use uh, superfoods or to eat superfoods. It's just part of my regular routine to help with recovery and to help, you know, my body get all the, the minerals and the vitamins that it needs. Because if you don't get those things, how do you expect your body to recover from the wear and tear that you put on it? You know, just like with your car, if you don't change the oil, if you don't take care of it, if you don't replace the parts when they get broken, uh, you know, how do you expect it to keep working? Now, um, I realize that, as some of you have pointed out, or in, I believe, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm sorry, I can't recall what I said half an hour ago. Um, but I believe the problem started mentally for me. I don't think it was a physical trigger. Um, I think there were some mental issues, stress or uh, attitudes or certain situations that triggered it. And I'm looking into that and, address it and addressing it. Now that I've dealt with the physical side, I want to address the mental side of it and see, see what happens with that. Um, so I'm looking into that. I, I can't elaborate on it because, well, first of all, it's personal, obviously. Second of all, I haven't fixed it yet. So if I don't fix it, if I don't find out what fixes it, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, there's no point in just yapping uh, and flapping my, 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 my mouth uh, to, no, to no avail. Um, and I realize there's some, there's some irony here because uh, my wife and I, we run, we run a company that promotes a healthy lifestyle, uh, you know, through how to live a better life through, through better food uh, uh, and, and certain practices like uh, relaxation and exercise and so on. And we teach these things, and yet here I am with back pain. 
here I am uh, failing at what we teach. Um, so there's, there's some irony there. But those of you who are teachers, you can probably understand that it's hard to turn around and look at yourself. It's easier to see the problems with others uh, because the third pair of eyes that comes in out of the blue looks at something. Um, you know, you can you can you can see what's wrong if you are trained that way or if you have that kind of knowledge, and you can you can help that person. But it's hard to turn around and look at yourself because you're no longer objective; you're subjective, uh, and it's difficult to identify those issues that plague yourself. But I'm still, and I've said this in the past, and it's not like I'm changing my message or I'm flip-flopping on something. You always have to self-examine. It's part of our maturation process. It's part of our um, becoming adults. It's part of what we should do as we get older, is we self-examine. We sit down with ourselves. We talk with ourselves. We look at the things that are going on in our heads. We listen to our thoughts. And then we start to, you know, figure out what's a wrong thought, what's a right thought. If I keep having these bad thoughts, how can I address the issue? What's the problem? What can I do about it? And so I continue to do that. I will continue to do it. I believe it's our duty. Every one of us should question ourselves, should question our beliefs, should question everything. Um, and it can be maddening. It can be stressful, but I believe it's our responsibility. We can't just let ourselves be spoon-fed by culture, by traditional culture or traditional religion or traditional anything. We can't just be spoon-fed by the news, by uh, uh, what we hear from our parents, uh, what we hear from our neighbors or friends. We have to question these things. What's, what's right for us? What's wrong for us? Um, what do we believe about something? Um, and if we don't take the time to do that, uh, then we fail ourselves. And I probably that's what happened with me. You know, I was so busy with work at that time. I was so stressed out. I was working from like 6, 7 in the morning to 12, 1 at night, um, 2 in the morning sometimes. And then getting up and doing it over. Um, and by the way, right now I'm doing the same damn thing. At least now I'm sleeping late. Uh, now I sleep to like 9 or 10 in the morning, but I still work to like 2 or 3 in the morning. And it's not healthy. I know it. Damn it, I know it. But with a small child in the house, it's very hard to find time during the day to actually do your work. And um, she's been on vacation uh, she's going to start kindergarten again pretty soon, but uh, she's been on vacation, so she's been with us all day. And it's just us, my wife and I. And we have to do everything. Uh, and it's difficult. It's difficult to find time for the things that you need to do. And so some things are going to fall by the wayside. And when that happens, you know, sometimes maybe you run into pain. Anyway long enough video. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope I've been helpful to you. This is why I make these videos to be helpful to you because I don't just sit here flapping my mouth for no reason. I don't enjoy flapping my mouth. I'm not a talkative person. Uh, if you meet me in person, I'll be mostly quiet um, and you'll think that I don't like you. No, it's just that I, that's how I am. I don't like to talk. I've already got a headache from talking so much now. Um, but uh, trying to think if I forgot something, um, if I forgot to say something. No, I think that's it. If you have questions, post them in the comments, uh, and uh, I'll try to answer them. I, uh, if you're in pain, um, I wish you healing. I don't wish the kind of pain I had on anybody, um, not that kind of torture for months at a time. And not the kind of torture that once makes you want to do things to yourself that you should be doing. Um, that's not fun for anybody. So I don't wish that. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. No, it's... Uh, I wish you healing if you're in that kind of pain that I was. And um, 
seek solutions. I hope this video is helpful to you. If it wasn't, I apologize, but continue to seek solutions for your problems. Um, because right now with the internet and this explosion of information out there, there's bound to be a solution to your problem. So yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time.